Welcome back from that short break. I am Ruthina Seje. You're still watching New Vision TV News. I now take you to studio where Lynn Komgisha is with Paul Busharizi to analyze the alleged printing of excess currency by Bank of Uganda officials. Hello, my name is Lynn Komgisha. Uh, we have had several stories about the Bank of Uganda saga. Government agencies are telling us their different story. The government is telling us its different story. I don't have to ask further. Police is telling us its own story. And I have with me here, uh, with, uh, I'm here with Paul Bisharizi. Paul, who is fooling who? <laughs> well, um, I, I don't know the details, but there are certain... Neither do I. There are certain, there are certain parts of the story that has come out uh, that should just be shot down immediately. Uh -huh. so, so, so the story, I think, is that um, um, this uh, in April, mm -hmm. at the end of April, the Bank of Uganda received um, uh, print currency it had printed. Yep, yep. And uh, going by the governor's statement, um, it seems that there, was, there were questions about the consignment or how the currency came in. Uh, what we've been reading in the press is that apparently with the, with the consignment of money were other people's money not money other things goods yes uh -huh, okay. yes uh, certain okay. people's okay. and organizations goods and um, i think the suggestion has been that when uh, transporting money it should be exclusive there, sh there should be an yes. exclusive charter yes uh, with no other people's yes. uh, goods in it <laughs> so uh, i think the story then goes that um, when the central bank realized that there were other people's wares with mm. their money, that they alerted high authorities to investigate how this came about and all. You know, that's very interesting because the lead suspects are Bank of Uganda officials. Why is that? Uh, well, it makes sense. Uh, they're suspects, which means nothing may come of it. They're just yeah. going to be police looking But why do they go to them first? I mean, it's just like, uh, you know, God forbid, uh, <laughs> when uh, one person in a couple is murdered, mm. they look at the other person in the cup, uh, just out, out of routine. That yes, yes. If yes. the wife is murdered, they look at the husband. If the husband is murdered, they look at the wife first. So if there has been a theft with all those security precautions mm. around it, the first person people to look at are the Bank of Uganda. There's the rumor that mm. there was extra money printed. But that, first of all, let's, let's deal with the extra money. Okay. Printing money... Uh, First of all, printing money is done by what they call security uh, printers, print right. people who are certified security printers. Okay. Essentially, uh, it's not just you just don't just walk in and give them an order. Mm, it's a process. Exactly. Mm. So you don't go to the printer. It's not like NASA Road where you go to the printer and tell the guy, add for me a few more stickers or a few more posters. One, uh, th that's not the nature of security printing. Right. Two, I can assure you that whoever those security printers are, Ugandan business mm -hmm. of currency is not their biggest, they're not their biggest client. Uh, the real question then becomes, um, you know, how did this happen? Yeah. Bank of Uganda is was, a was, the, just yes, was the client of the printer, yes, not of not the, the, transporter. the transporter. So uh -huh. it is, and I, I s kind of find it strange that the printer would, you know, if Bank of Uganda asked for exclusive charter mm -hmm. or within their contract, mm -hmm. that they would do this. So I think that's what's going to have to be resolved. So, so wha how is this, you know, working out for the for Bank of Uganda? No, of course, it's, it's not, you know, central banks don't want to be in such kind of, of things. The central bank's uh, reputation is supposed to be beyond reproach. And, uh, you know, this kind of... of of misunderstanding, if I can call it that, mm -hmm. and coming out in, into the public, mm -hmm. just doesn't. It might uh, it might end up being uh, no big deal. I, I know. Thank you, Paul. You're welcome. So note that uh, money doesn't just get printed. Do not get ahead of yourselves. Absolutely. Thank you, Lynn, for that insight. I have to remind you that the Bride and Groom Expo is on this year. It is starting next week on Friday the 28th, and it will end on 30th. That is three days of planning your wedding. The theme for this year's Bride and Groom Expo is I Do and Beyond. 
We now take a look at our Daily Pearl of Africa series. Today it is Brunzori Mountain, now with its roots on the border of Uganda and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Brunzori Mountain is sometimes called the Mountains of the Moon because its mountains were thought to be the source of River Nile. Being Uganda's highest mountain, it speaks up permanently. Snow kept and the melting snow from the range do feed some of the farthest tributaries. Let's take a look. Located in southwestern Uganda and shared by both Uganda and the Democratic Republic of Congo, Renzori is one of the highest mountains in East Africa. It derives its name from Enjura, meaning rain in the local language. The locals always saw the mountain as the source of rain, hence the name Renzura or Renzori. The Renzori Mountains reach heights up to 5,109 meters or 16,762 feet above sea level. The highest Renzori peaks are permanently snow kept. Manjarita Peak on Mount Stanley is the highest point in the range. The mountains were formed about 3 million years ago and are in an extremely humid area, frequently involved with clouds. The mountain ranges are sources of many rivers that flow down to Kasese, Bundiwojo, and Kabalori districts. The Bakonjo and the Bamba live in the lower ranges of the mountains, both on the side of Uganda and the Democratic Republic of Congo. The mountain attracts so many tourists who come for mountain climbing as well as seeing the animals that dot Queen Elizabeth National Park and Semiliki National Park at the foot of the mountains. The combination of spectacular snow-capped peaks, glaciers, V-shaped valleys, fast-flowing rivers with magnificent waterfalls, clear blue lakes, and unique flora contributes to the area's exceptional natural beauty. The region's glaciers, waterfalls, and lakes make it one of Africa's most beautiful alpine areas. Activities at Renzori National Park include birding, cultural encounters, hiking, trekking, and nature walks. The park has many natural habitats of endangered species such as the African forest elephant and the eastern chimpanzee. The Renzori Mountain can be accessed through Fort Porto Town, then south to Ibanda and the southern route through Kasese that crosses the equator twice. That is it for today. Thank you for watching. Join me next time as we explore Uganda on New Vision TV's Pal of Africa Diaries with me, Ruth Nasije. For more Pal of Africa stories, visit our website, which is newvision.co.eug forward slash Pal of Africa. A newspaper, the Sunder Vision, is also another home of adventures. So grab your copy every Sunday for Pal of Africa stories. We now take a look at our special report today. Now, the government has in the past years built healthy centers in various sub-counties. In the budget speech read last week, the government also allocated money for more healthy centers. However, some commentators are saying there is more need for equipment in the health centers and hospitals. Now, this is the last excerpt of the discussion held here at the New Vision that analyzed the finance minister's budget speech read last week on Thursday. I'm looking at page 30 where the following interventions will be prioritized. Functionality of lower level health facilities by providing additional resources for operations and upgrading 124 health center twos to health center threes. Um, streamline health referral system to reduce pressure on super specialized Mulago National Referral Hospital. Construct staff houses and maternity wards in 81 health centers. Improve supply of medicines and health supplies and strengthen controls of more efficient drug management across the country. Improve human resources for health by training local health professionals and strengthening village health teams. 2.6 trillion is going to be spent in the sector 
comments. There is also food, food fortification, national nutritional education, train and support small scale millers, and revise the national nutrition action plan. So, you have, yes, Sise, shoot, it's right there. Actually, I was looking at uh, Roman numeral one where they're saying improve the functionality of uh, lower health facilities by providing additional resources for this. But functionality doesn't go in isolation with staffing. Most health facilities actually do not have sufficient um, staff. That's why you realize that doctor-patient ratio, and at times we talk of uh, stock out, theft of drugs, you find that they, and, and at times the people who are at these health centers, most of them are actually, a majority of them, and not well trained. When you go up country, you realize that actually, for midwives, at times you, you, you're going to get a local person who's just going to come and sit in because at times the in charge or whatever is away attending workshops and something like that. So, this I think to me, much as we're improving the functionality, it shouldn't only be about upgrading. I think staffing in these health facilities is very, very important. What does upgrading actually mean? You may upgrade, and there are, when you look at the requirements, the particular staff that are supposed to be in particular health centers. If it is a two, if it is a three, it is a one, you're going to find that um, as they keep upgrading, even the services offered, keep on upgrading. But I want to also touch the question of safe water and sanitation. And Olive, I want you to say something so that the people in your village hear you. Huh? <laughs> they are talking about sewage treatment plants, rehabilitation of water facilities, piped water, and environmentally friendly waterborne toilet facilities, and strengthen operation and maintenance of water facilities in collaboration with water user communities is 1.1 trillion shillings. These are all very important, but we all know that if you give someone a toilet functioning, basing on water, when they do not know how to use it, it is as good as useless. So I think it is key that they also include sensitization in all this. Okay. The pipe water system is useless if people cannot use it. When we make investments like this, uh, are we investing in capacity in the local areas to maintain? You go and dig your borehole in Nakapiripirit and there is a single person in Nakapiripirit who can maintain a borehole. Just simple mechanics to keep it running. The last time I interacted with the water sector, I found that every water user point has a water user committee. And mostly, water user committee chairpersons are women, because they are the women who are in the business of fetching water and children. But when I look at the sensitization, to me, linking it with education would look at preserving what we already have. I've looked at this, I don't see harvesting the already existing water. Because the water that falls from people's roofs is wasted. If we'd say that every health center that has roofs on different structures have facilities for collecting that water for both underground and surface tanks, then we shall minimize the cost of construction unless we want to say that those who are in the business of um, constructing boreholes and others are going to have bigger investment opportunities to put them. Thank you for watching. Be sure to catch my news updates and other programs here on New Vision TV by visiting our website, which is newvision.co.eg forward slash video. You can follow us on social media. Facebook is the New Vision. Twitter is at New Vision, where Instagram is at New Vision, where and our YouTube channel is New Vision TV. Catch up with me on my Twitter handle. I am Ruth the Voice. Now I say good night, but I end with a fact file.